fires of strife will consume thee, but fear not the battle, fear not the war. Embrace the strife, but turn thyself from the struggle. Keep thyself strong against those that would batter thee. Keep thy soul fortified against the trials that shall overtake thee. What's up, you beautiful, beautiful gamers, and we will come back to role playing games. Like always, in today's Road to About Lord video, we will be talking about Magran, her deeds in the world, the people that pledges to her, and her ideals. And with that being said, well, who's Magran? Magran is the goddess of war, fire, and struggle. She is invoked and revered by warriors of all cultures, but especially by the people of the Deerwood, who believe the goddess helped them defeat Saint Waywin during the Saints' War. Magran favors bold actions and quick wits over emotions and diplomacy. While she is the goddess of war and struggle, she deeply believes in the kith, in their potential, in their capabilities to survive, and she favors those who are fit and able to overcome all of the difficulties that life can bring to them. Indeed, kith must discover for themselves what it is they are worth, and of what it is they are capable. What we do for them, they do not learn for themselves. Trial breeds ingenuity. If our work of generations was not in vain, Kith will succeed in spite of Aethys' actions. I have faith in Kith's ability to meet Aethys' challenge. Do not mistake my words for indifference, Watcher. They are born from a fierce belief in your potential, not a refutation of it. Choice is a luxury we can earn through peace. Struggle is our fundamental nature. Even when our banners sit idle, mankind foments strife. Friends argue with their fists, lover kindle jealousies, merchants compete with lies. Wherever mankind goes, struggle follows. Magran is the goddess of fire and war, not bloodshed and conquest. Though many in Red Seras would tell it differently. How bitter they must be that Magran's priests were able to destroy a god made manifest. How bitter indeed. We who worship Magran are not idle barbarians or cloistered mystics. We are soldiers, armorers, watchmen, and bodyguards, artisans of conflict and protectors of our families and flags. We do not salivate for battle, we view war as unwelcome. But struggle is our fundamental nature. We do not pray for strife, we pray for the wisdom to resolve it quickly. We do not wish for the war, but when it inevitably must be fought, we find divine ecstasy in discipline, efficiency, and excellence. When Euthas manifested as an avatar through the farmer Wadewin, Magran was entrusted by the other gods to put an end to Euthas' chaos. The goddess of war guided twelve priests so that they could build the god's hammer, and while the Dawson were holding Eothas in the bridge, these twelve Magran priests were praying and channeling their magic to the bomb, so that it would not only destroy Eothas' body, but his soul as well. Ever since that moment, the cult that pledges to Magran has been divided, and even persecuted in some places of Eora. Magran priests are not well seen in Riyadh Seras which is where Eothas' rebellion started, where the god manifested to lead mankind. One of the priests that helped to create the god's hammer was Durance. If this is his original name, well, that is unknown. What is known about this troubled man is that he was in fact one of those that played a part in Eothas' death. When Eothas manifested in the world to lead mankind in his holy war, Magran manifested to her priesthood, and she guided their hands in making the artifact that would be Eothas demise. Through the whole process, Magran was there with her priests, guiding their hands. When the bomb finally exploded at Halgot Citadel, all of the priests perished in a rain of fire and chaos, all of them but one. The empty vessel that walks aimlessly Eora, bearing the name Durance hammered by fire in his scorched skin. Ever since that moment, Magran has been silent to him, which caused a stain in his mind. He left Magran's clergy, 
but the hatred towards other faiths still remains in his troubled entrails. In the shadows that cast doubts in Durance's mind, he often ponders, in the thought of why is the goddess silence since the chaotic events. The most prominent thought would be that to create a tool of destruction mighty enough to slay a god, proper payment would be to relinquish the soul of Makers. Yet, there is one thought that lingers deep within his most hidden sentiments, that Magran intended for all of them to die. Such a thought would be against the creed, against the faith, and the teachings that they have from their goddess. Magran does not take pleasure in war, she values discipline courage, Baldur. Not only in war would Kith dedicate a prayer to their goddess, but in every single struggle in their lives. Magran teaches the Kith to be self-sufficient. She values wit and cleverness to solve struggle without chaos. Or at least that's what Kith believe. That is what Durance used to believe as well. Fire, flame, the searing heat of Magran's fury. All this await the unfaithful, the weak, those that help not themselves. Take heart in thine own strength, take comfort in thine own power, take control of thine own path. Let the fire guide you, let the fire transform you, let the fire purify you, let the fire consume you. That being said, you beautiful, beautiful gamers, that'll be all for today's Road to About Lore video. Do let me know in the comments below what kind of lore would you like to see in next Sunday, because we'll be looking at a whole bunch of lore more about the world of About. <laughs> about the world of About, alright. With that being said, you beautiful gamers, I'll see you in the next one. Remember to stay safe, remember to stay awesome. I'll see you beautiful, beautiful gamers. Don't you ever forget that, each and every single one of you. The beautiful people. I'll see you later.